a 20 year resident here in Maywood. We have owned a home on 19th and Washington across on the United Methodist Church. We, my husband and I bought the home 20 years ago. We built it pretty much ourselves. We kind of, uh, it was our project home. And it was a place in Maywood I came to because I lived in Austin community growing up and Maywood represented all of that things, the good things in that community that I saw. The tree lined streets, the neighbors that are uh, welcoming. We knew everybody on the block. And when I came to my block, that's exactly how it was. And what we experienced of a house fire, our house burned down, our neighbors came to us and said, you know, don't leave the community. You know, young people are needed here. We want people to reinvest here and, and you know, leave a hole in the block. And we never intended to do something. We put a lot into the house and we were like, you know, this is our neighborhood. So we reinvested, we rebuilt our home and we decided that this is the place that we raise our family. So our children are going to Washington School. It's a dual language academy. They're learning Spanish. We're incorporating ourselves into that same spirit. Because I also, um, I volunteer with PASO. They're an um, immigrant service with a passion for integrating our community. Because black and brown people we need to work together. We all have the same struggle. We all have the same experience that we're going through this um, life as you know, not so low on the totem pole, but it's an economic issue. It's not really a race issue. And we need to realize that and work together. So that's part of um, one of my platforms. But another thing that we're looking for is to bring businesses back into the uh, neighborhood. The biggest problem that I see when I talk to people out in the business community say, like, oh, it's so difficult to do business here. You go to the poll uh, enforcement, it's difficult to get anything done. You know, you, if you go to get a business license, it takes years to get it done. But, and it shouldn't be like that. So part of our platform is to streamline that process, to bring a uh, easier plan for businesses to do business with us. We want to make sure that they understand that we are welcoming to businesses. We want to make, we want to streamline that process. We'll create a division that will actually work solely with businesses. And so that they'll understand when they walk in the door, you have a liaison, you have a one-stop shop, and you will actually walk through the process of how to do business with me. So we, are very focused on bringing that revenue into the community to lower the uh, property values for our, our residents. Because if we don't have those businesses looking at me, and they are looking, but they just can't do the business because of the way our government is set up. So we have like-minded individuals. Um, our team is very focused on that. So our plan is to make sure that we focus on those businesses, bring them in, reduce the property taxes, also get our other properties back on the tax roll. We have vacant homes throughout the village. We want to bring those back on the tax roll. We have homes right now in Mayweather that are selling for two hundred thousand plus. And people say, two hundred thousand dollars? Yes. They, the developers are developing these homes that are making them beautiful and people are buying them because they want to be here. This is a perfect location. We have every asset to be proud of here in Mayweather. What we need to do is work on our image. Our image is the biggest perception. It's even in our own mind when we say to each other about it. Oh, it's, you know, it's potholes. It's, it's a lot of communities have that same problem, but they don't down themselves as much as we do. So I think that once we create a better perception of Maywood within our own minds, within our village itself, to allow people to say, okay, you know, Maywood is looking different because we need to put that image out there. So we need to revamp our website. We need to, um, we get to some of the policies and procedures that we have when we're dealing with businesses. So if we continue to do those things and move forward, I think we'll be able to move the community So that's one of my platforms. Again, like I said, my, my name is like me. I, um, the background on me is that I, I, I'm a licensed builder. I worked with at and for 21 years before I retired myself um, due to some medical issues. And then I became a realtor and uh, focused really mainly on investment. So I understand the building process. My husband is a contractor and a builder, so I understand what it takes to make a community better. I worked in the city of Chicago for the the MMRP grants, to get these uh, uh, tax incentives that the city of Chicago allowed for businesses to grow. It's even available in Cook County for opportunity zones to bring that money in and allow businesses to tap into those funds to actually build up communities. So um, working through that, uh, I just developed a large amount of contacts and history on building a community. So I just wanted to say, um, if you work with this group and 
and told us it's awesome. We definitely returned to the matrix. Right. Hi, everybody. Um, I promise uh, to be quick. I'm going to pass it over to Chad so we can talk about the reason why we're here. But a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Miguel Jones. I was born and raised in Maywood. Uh, literally born, born at Loyola Hospital. Um, really grassroots guy. Went to Washington Elementary, so I am a Wildcat. Graduated in 2007. Uh, graduated from Baltimore Lutheran, right over here in Merrill's Park in 2011. Uh, graduated with a, a bachelor's degree in accounting uh, in uh, 2011. And so I've been an accountant. Uh, now work as a senior level accountant uh, in corporate America. I've been doing that for about eight years now. So um, that's just a little bit about myself. Um, as far as why am I running for um, running for trustee? So I mean, it's a couple of reasons. I've always been community um, uh, related, and I've always thought that was really um, having a sense of community is what's going to uh, uh, take our community to the next level. Um, and so, um, even since in college, you know, I, you know, I played Alpha Phi Alpha, and I was the president of that organization. And I've been a part of many uh, projects that impacted the community um, positively, whether, whether it's programs like homeless people or homeless people are homeless people, um, uh, just kind of going back and just volunteering and, and, and giving my effort. So I think just one of many reasons, but my, my background is really with um, with finances. And so like that's where I bring my expertise. Uh, I've been, like I said, I've been doing accounting for about eight years now, so um, I, I know about financial preparation. I know about budgets and forecasts. I, mean, I deal with this at a very large level with you know um, with cost centers that you know have hundreds of millions of dollars um, for spend, and it's, you know it's critical that we stay aligned with those budgets. And so it is, it is essential as we uh, think about the future, folks need to know what's going on with their money today and how to utilize that to um, to uh, to fund the future. And so like that's what I'm about, the numbers guy. I'm someone that I'm, I'm structured around policies and procedures, um, organizational management focus. So I'm about, I'm about processes, I'm about answering the, the whys. And so um, that's just a little bit about myself. And uh, you know, I'm really passionate about Maywood. Like I said, I was born and raised. Um, went to Washington. Like I, you know, I literally have been from the community. I understand the value of getting involved. And, and if you see a problem, you know, you don't, you just don't sit back and complain about it. You, you get involved. And that's, uh, that's the approach that I've decided to take. So, um, to kind of transition, uh, I'll take the honor to just kind of transition to why we're here and so we can get started. Um, we want to hear from the community as it relates to just topics that impact our community. And so, the topics that we picked today, this isn't all inclusive. You know, we're going to have more of these, but the topics that we picked today are uh, public safety economic development and infrastructure. So um, we've kind of talked about it amongst ourselves and we've utilized you know, certain resources like the comprehensive plan that, uh, that, that uh, the village um, has put into place. Uh, we, you know, we've utilized speaking with residents, but we want to have a constructive conversation about these topics. We want to hear from you. We want you to kind of drive the conversation or we're going to drive the conversation. We really want to get input on you guys as far as like what are some things that uh, when you think about these topics, what are some things that come to mind? Um, we want to have you know some discussion about it, and not only discussion, but we want to talk about how do we solve it. We want to be result oriented. I, I think that's 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 the reason why we're here. Uh, we want to talk about solutions. We just don't want this to be a, a fireside chat, but we want this to be constructive. We want to be able to take this back um, to us and with with our organization and say, hey, here's what the residents have in mind, and uh, here's what they want to see. And here are the solutions that they, they've offered, and our job is to implement. And, and it's your job to say, hey, you told us what, what you wanted, now it's to hold us accountable. So that's the type of conversation that we're looking for. So with no further ado, I'm going to pass it back over to uh, Ms. Keys, and she's going to uh, introduce us to the first topic. So uh, first topic is uh, public safety. So some of the um, items that we going to kind of focus on as a campaign um, would be uh, working on increasing police presence, so for working on um, training police officers and, and getting them better. Um, another um, item that, that we plan on covering would also be uh, reintroducing the Cambridge uh, Block Club Commission. So these are just some things that, that we are kind of thinking about, but you know, want to hear from you all on public safety. What are some, some, some areas of opportunity 
things that, that keep you up at night. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll give a personal story. Um, so I live in Maywood, and I had someone knock on my door at 3 a.m. Um, telling me that, you know, someone was uh, chasing them with a gun. And, you know, he was trying to get in my house, and I was like, well, I, I can't let you in here, but I'll call the police for you. Called the police at 3 a.m. He didn't. Police never came. I called back. Police never came. And they literally never came at all. Um, and that really, you know, disappointed and frightened me as a resident. And I'm just like, okay, what am, what am I paying my tax dollars for if I can't even get, you know, police officers to show up when I actually need them? Um, so that, that concerns me. So that's just one of my, you know, main focuses as a resident is getting, you know, proper police coverage on the street, getting them to respond. Um, that's just me. So I'll throw that out there. I just kind of want to hear from you all. Any, any let's, let's write that down. So you mentioned like uh, response time uh, or, responsi or responding at all. To our, to our residents, whether it's um, a emergency or whether it's you know something in the middle, whether it's low risk, like we need to have we need we need a response. Like when our when our police staff are contact, there needs to be some sort of response. So that's one thing. Anybody else got any thoughts? It doesn't you know just have to be uh, police officers, just just any other form of public. One of my concerns is you know I'm seeing a lot of
and have those type of discussions, you're able to, and it's not, a, it's not subjective, it's objective, like, hey, so here's what we set as a standard, um, and, and you either met it or didn't, and it's not like, it's not my opinion, it's, it's, it's based on what we agreed upon, and it's based upon the, the um, you know, it, it's based on like that agreement and then that follow -up. So um, I think how we, uh, how we'll, what our plans were is making sure that that evaluation process is effective. So in other words, just like any other job, if you don't do your job up to standard, you know what happens, right? Um, then, you know, then there's discussion about it, and eventually, you know, you have to figure out, you have to put someone in place that can, that can be committed to executing on that. So um, I think it's about having effective, measurable, um, uh, uh, attainable, yeah, and, and, and being able to say, um, you know, based on this, you either did a good job or a bad job. I and mean, how we know that's an issue is based on the fact that, given the, the last, um, you know, uh, I hate to call him a village manager, but I don't know the situation, but I would say, given the fact that he got a raise this past year, shows me that that we're how we're measuring how well he's doing isn't right. You know, like, I don't think anyone deserves that type of promotion, if you will, given the results that have happened. So I think it's about identifying um, what, what are we measuring based on, and then being able to hold those accountability. Uh, and, to, and to your point, the, the other thing that you mentioned is like, um, you know, how do you make sure that these things are executed? So how do the board is set up? So of course you need numbers to matter in the village of Bainwood. So if you don't have, you can have all of the great ideas, you can, you know, bring forth all of like the solutions. But the first thing you need is the votes, right? So if you if you don't have the votes on the board, you can bring anything to the table. If you don't have the numbers to support what you're trying to do, how many votes? Is that? Um, and it's you need no, no, four votes. Four. Four so votes. Four. So you need four votes in order to, to make it happen. So or or you need the ability to be able to work with people, you know, on the board that's currently on the board to be able to get them to see what you see gain their support and want to move whatever that is you're trying to move forward. Um, so it, it, it's two things. You, numbers matter from the board perspective. And the other thing is the ability to work with people, um, you know, just beyond politics to, you know, for the greater good of the village to get whatever you're trying to get accomplished. That's the other thing. And then I would like to add that you also need people on the board that are committed to making things. That they're not just here for, you know, the moment and to just uh, get their resume looking better. They're actually here and committed to making things around the neighborhood look better and to do more work for the citizens here. So I think that if we look at the people that are running and see what are their real objectives, what are they trying to accomplish here in the neighborhood and they're looking to do better here, then you know, that's what you should vote for. And like he said, you need the numbers. You need the amount of votes necessary to make anything pass. So in order to get those things done and execute your plan, is there anything, I don't want to move past the topic, give another comment. Uh, I just want to make sure we touch on at least every topic before we I don't want to take it. Okay, and we'll, 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 we'll revisit it, but uh, let's move on to economic development so we can have a brief discussion on that. So, um, another reason why I'm kind of partnering with volunteering with their campaign is some of their um, pillars around economic development. So, and I'm kind of talk, talking to them about, you know, what are you going to stand for? You know, what, what type of value are you all going to add to the community? Um, they mentioned, you know, revitalizing uh, a partnership with the um, Maywood Village uh, Chamber of Commerce. And, and then also just getting, attracting more businesses to them. So me personally, uh, that was one of the reasons why I like coming back to Maywood, is, you know, not only does this town hold a special place in my heart, I, I also see the, the potential from a business standpoint on, you know, small businesses, real estate investment, and, and, and um, various uh, opportunities such as that. So that was one of the main reasons you know, why, why I wanted to partner with them. So those are just my stands like, as a resident. So I wanted to kind of um, throw it to you guys just to kind of get a better understanding on economic development and um, you know, what you would call That's a good one. That's a great one. Why can't we write like, because you are a current trustee, so I guess I am kind of pushing questions towards the trustees that are in the position now. Yes. I know you were partnering with the board agents and you were now. Great. It was, it was fun. Like, it was a nice experience, but I want my grocery store. I like fresh groceries. I don't want to run to the Rose Park and Oak Park. And, you know, I want to buy in my community. 
Yeah. Right. So, so um, just recognizing the gap in regards to like fresh produce um, not being available to the residents of the village of Maywood, um, I was able to connect with um, the owner of uh, 40 Acres, um, and I was like, let's bring this to the community. I said because you know the residents are, you know what, they, they, they should have to go to like Harold Park and just other communities. Um, and she was doing this. Um, she did it one time before, and she did it in Chicago. And I was like, bring this to Maywood. You know, this would definitely work in our community. And brought it to Maywood. You're talking about off the charts. She had people coming from Old Park. I mean, it was just like people were coming from everywhere to you know invest in her business. And I would be, you know, just happy to report that she is actually looking at a uh, um, place along Fifth Avenue to open up an actual store here in Maywood, just based on her success in the village. So we have to show people what's possible um, in our community. We have to make sure that we enhance and improve our image in the business world as well, the business finance world as well. Let people know that Maywood knows how to <coughs> do business with, with, with business people. For a long time, there was this perception that you know Maywood had too much great people, and we didn't know how to do business with folks. So we, it, the goal is to like work on enhancing that and making sure that we find businesses that are economically feasible for our community. Um, because just because we want something in our town, it doesn't mean we're going to have it. It has to be, because they, they understand. The people in the business department, they know your numbers, they know where you spend your dollars at. They, they know they have all of these stats already. So we have to find what's economically feasible for Maywood and what's going to work for Maywood residents. Like I was just talking to uh, someone the other day, and they were saying, well, Mariano, or you know, all of these major big chain stores, they have certain criteria that they look at. Some of, some of them will, will not build or create another store and in a certain radius where, where, they have a, a, where they have a store already located. So you don't get to know what their blueprint, you know, what size, what size store that they um, are looking to build. And then, you know, some of them don't build if it's not other businesses, um, like in that particular area, that, you know, or if the, if the traffic count is not right. So what we know is this about, about, about Maywood. So we know that, you know, in the there was conversation, and I think that, that the idea, of, you know, or the concept wasn't really an idea. Part of this was part of the um, the economic the economic comprehensive plan for the village, the one time. So one time we were looking at building along First Avenue, based upon the traffic count. And back in 2000, and I've been attending board meetings since the early 2000s. So back in 2000 and. 2003, Ralph Connor was the mayor of uh, Maywood. And the goal was, at the time, was to redevelop First Avenue based upon the traffic count. Because that's what people are looking for. People are looking for people just flowing through the neighborhood. So that was part of the concept. I think that was a great idea to look at um, uh, along First Avenue based on the traffic count. But I do believe that a grocery store will work in Maywood and we have paid grocers at the table just recently, um, looking at moving the community, but we want to make sure that they are economically feasible, that they're not going to come in like we had, you know, uh, a situation at a grocery store that came in and was gone like this six or seven months. Yeah. We want to make sure people know and understand what they are doing before they open up the business, that they're not going to come in and, you know, tap into our resources and leave in six months. That cannot be the case. We got to make sure they're feasible and they have the resources to thrive and yeah, you know, we understand that you may have to assist them a little bit, but yeah, we're not going to give you the, you know, the whole situation, and um, you know, you're not going to run your, your, your business off, off the village for a taxpayer's dollar. That's not going to be the situation. So I do believe, and we just recently had a grocer, and he's no longer at the table um, due to you know, his financial reasons, but um, I, I do think people who will get a grocery store, um, and it will be either that, and, and I know this. I've attended for the past three and a half years the Illinois Retail and Development Conference. We had um, with the old audience for that, that was a major grocer looking at the location. And they also had a contract, uh, but again, financial uh, situations occurred as well that didn't allow them to move forward. So people are looking at Maywood. People understand that there's opportunities that exist in this community, and they want to be a part of the, the, the opportunity. Um, and it's just about continuing to promote this community continue to fix it up 
you know, as well, because no one want to, you know, move in a community where you, you have situations on that every corner. So, and we're working to do that. We're working to address that. We're on track. We're developing. We're finishing up the um, infrastructure along Washington Boulevard as well. But when you enhance, this is what we have to know too. When you have community development, then you have economic development. You cannot have economic development and business coming in if the community is not invested in its own community. It will not happen. And that's what we have to do, continue to invest in our roads, our streets, how we, how we look and continue to enhance our image and make sure that the services that people receive in our communities, are, um, in our communities, they want to serve us. Anything, anything else? Grocery store, I have that